all of a sudden with the success in MAD 199, these are red hot targets for, for more massive nickel sulfide. So we've now got a great pipeline of conductors at depth to test. Well, hello, welcome to Assay TV. Today, I'm delighted to be joined once again by John Prinius, who is the Executive Chairman of St. George Mining. John, uh, joining us today from Sydney. Um, a lot of uh, exciting news coming out of your Mount Alexander project in uh, Western Australia uh, over the last uh, few months. Um, I want to start off by talking about one of your recent hulls, uh, hull MAD199 at your investigators uh, prospect. Um, tell us a little bit about uh, that result and, and why that's, uh, you know, sort of a potential big game changer for the company. Yeah, no, thank you, Leo. Uh, we're delighted with the results from uh, MAD199. Uh, it intersected massive nickel sulfides at 330 metres downhole. Uh, fantastic result for us. We've been doing a few deep holes over the past 12 months to see where the uh, deep continuity of the mineralisation is. Uh, we've hit plenty of intrusive rocks, which are the host rocks for our nickel sulfide mineralization. But MAND199 was the first one that's actually hit the high grade mineralization. So, a fantastic breakthrough. It's confirmed that our extensive intrusive mineral system does host mineralization at depth. Um, and it's just opened up a new frontier of exploration for us and given us a potential uh, scale that we we're lacking so far. Mm. Because you, you, so it's quite an extensive belt, the cathedral's belt, and you've had sort of four uh, major prospects that you've been drilling on. Um, so far, a lot of the mineralization has been a lot shallower, though, hasn't it? Yeah, no, that's right. We've got four discoveries over about a five kilometre strike of the belt, the investigators, Strickland's, cathedrals and radar discoveries. They start 30 metres below surface, so ridiculously shallow, fantastic high grade mineralisation, uh, nickel, copper, cobalt and platinum group metals. So very confident we can monetize those shallow deposits, but they are relatively small. Uh, the real prize has been trying to find the deeper extensions. And that's why MAD199 has been such a success and, and important hole for us. Mm. And in terms of sort of extending your, your exploration at depth, um, you've done some downhole electromagnetic survey on, on MAD199. What have you found so far? Yeah, no, the good news is um, that it did light up another conductor. Um, surface EM we've done across the belt. Uh, it has helped us find these shallow discoveries because the surface EM can see down to about 250 metres, but it can't see the stuff further deep. So downhole EM surveys are now very, very important for us. Um, we do have some other downhole EM conductors uh, at depth and all of a sudden with the success in MAD199, these are red hot targets for, for more massive nickel sulfide. So we've now got a great pipeline of conductors at depth to test. Mm. And, and, and I think the, the conductors were, were, were sort of found at, at the same level that you were finding the mineralization. So that's it all sort of matches up. Yeah. Yeah, no, we, we can try and map and interpret the intrusive network and it sort of maps up with where um, the conductors are as well. So it's it's perfect uh, exploration at the moment. Mm. So when, when will you have more drill bits turning in that in that area? Uh, the first hole we're doing is a 125 metre extension hole on MAD199. So we're testing 125 metres down plunge. Uh, that hole should be finished very, very soon. If that hits some um, nickel sulfides, then we've got potentially a 125 metre strike length continuity of that mineralization, which would be absolutely fantastic. Um, so stay tuned, the results should be out very, very soon. Mm. And also, um, you've been doing some work uh, further to the west, I believe, of, in, your, in, your, uh, in, the nickel, in the cathedral's belt at the West End uh, prospect, doing some uh, gravity survey there. What, what's that showing? Yeah, that's right. Uh, the surface EM at West End was not particularly effective. Uh, it's got conductive cover there, wet clays, which uh, interfere with the surface EM. So we rolled out a gravity survey. The gravity will distinguish between the uh, the less dense granite and the more dense uh, nickel sulfides and intrusive rocks. And it's highlighted a number of strong gravity features, which uh, we think are going to be intrusive rocks and potentially nickel sulfides. So uh, that's a great um, uh, uh, revelation for us. And it's also given us a number of great targets uh, to drill. Mm. And when do you think you'll be able to get in there and do some drilling? Yeah, I think uh, after we do this extension hole at uh, MAD199, we'll probably uh, go over and test one of these gravity targets and, and try and see what they are. Mm. And in terms of sort of getting assays back and, and also getting hold of drill rigs, how's the situation looking at the moment? 
Yes, the market is a bit tight. Uh, assays are a little bit delayed, uh, but we all just have to be patient. Um, and similarly with the drill rigs, uh, there's a tightness in the market for drill rigs, a lack of availability of drill crews. Um, but we're making do at the moment, so we just keep chugging along. As you say, everyone just needs to be a bit a bit more patient than, than normal. Um, but the results will come eventually. Um, in terms of the sort of metallurgy of what you've what you've got there, um, a lot of people are talking about sort of the need for for, for these metals such as nickel and stuff to be sort of be, to be green greenly sourced um, with low low energy and ease of processing. How, how's the metallurgy looking? Yeah, well, we had sulfide mineralization, not laterite, so it's wonderful sulfide mineralization. Uh, we've done some preliminary met work on it. Uh, we have shown that we can produce separate nickel and copper concentrates through a standard uh, flotation process. So just using some reagents, we're not using any carbon intensive, electricity intensive process. So we're definitely in green nickel. Uh, we're producing very high grades of nickel and uh, copper uh, with cobalt credits and very high platinum group uh, metals as well. Um, it's the kind of nickel that will be used for, for batteries, um, uh, high purity stuff. Mm. And absolutely. And also, and also you have the platinum group metals there uh, with a potential time with sort of uh, fuel cells and, and, and hydrogen production and things like that. Yeah, absolutely. Our, our platinum group metals are about 80 percent palladium and about 10 percent rhodium. Both of those are trading at historical highs. So really good, valuable uh, mineralization. We think twice as valuable as a, a standard nickel sulfide deposit. Mm. So lots going on there at Mount Alexander, but uh, meanwhile you also have a project in the in the Patterson province, I believe, a copper gold project that you're, you're you're starting to look at. Tell us a little bit about about that one. Yeah, that's been on the back burner uh, while we uh, got the heritage survey completed there to give us clearance to go and drill. Um, that has just been uh, completed, so we've got uh, the green light to go and drill. We should be drilling out there first week uh, in June. Uh, our ground is uh, next door to Antipa Resources, which has a joint venture with uh, Rio Tinto. They've already made discoveries on that ground, and Rio Tinto, of course, has made the big Winu discovery about 50 kilometres to the, to the west of us. We've rolled out uh, geophysical surveys, aeromagnetic and gravity surveys on the, the project area. It has highlighted some very exciting uh, geophysical signatures, which we think are very similar to what have led to the discoveries on our neighbour's ground. So we're very excited to be finally getting out there and drilling that area. Mm. And, and how many metres are you sort of planning in this initial drill programme? Yeah, we've got 50 holes planned. All 50 holes were cleared by the Heritage Survey. So we're OK to go and, and drill all those holes. It's about an 8,000 metre RC programme. Take about two months uh, to complete. But hopefully we'll get some early indications, visual indications that we're in the right area. Fantastic. Well, lots of activity there uh, on, on both of those projects to, to come. Lots of things for people to look out for. Um, thank you very much uh, for joining us today and giving us an update on your projects. Thank you, Leah. Thank you.